Hello and welcome to the episode 168 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The recording of the fourth Pop Go The Beatles radio show, A Final Night in Melbourne, and the completion of yesterday are among the stories we'll tell today. But before we start, let me remind you to please support me in one of the ways outlined on www.simonmas.com support. Any donation, any share, any comment you want to send my way, it all helps a lot. Show me how fab you are and I will keep on creating music-related content for you to enjoy. Thank you and let's get on with the show. On the 17th of June 1961, we get the Beatles with beat, bass and drums, busy as usual at the Top 10 Club, for their ongoing second residency in Hamburg, West Germany. Two years later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, were at the Maida Vale Studios in London. The task of the day was to record their fourth show for BBC Radio's Pop Go The Beatles. The sessions took place in the morning, from 10.30 to 1.00 pm, including rehearsal. The guest act was The Bachelors. For their part, The Beatles recorded I Saw Her Standing There, Anna Go To Him, Boys, Chains, P.S. I Love You and Twist and Shout. In the afternoon, after a lunch at a BBC staff restaurant, the lads celebrated Paul McCartney's birthday. Photographer Deso Hoffman was with the band throughout the day. In 1964, before their third and final night at the Festival Hall in Melbourne, Australia, the Beatles had a bit of free time. George Harrison took the chance to tour the Dandenong Mountains, while John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr had their hair cut in their hotel rooms. As for the last night at the festival hall, the Fabs gave another two concerts during the evening. The six concerts in the last three days were viewed by a total audience of 45,000 people, an average of 7,500 people per show. Tonight's second show was filmed by a crew from Australian Channel 9 and turned along with footage of Australian and other international music acts, into a special called The Beatles Sing for Shell, Shell Oil being the sponsor of the broadcast. The special was aired on the 1st of July between 7.30 and 8.30 pm. Beatles manager Brian Epstein had originally insisted that only 12 minutes of the band's performance could be included in the program, but after seeing the raw footage, he was so pleased that he allowed the total time to reach 22 minutes. The Fabs, then, were seen performing I Saw Her Standing There, You Can't Do That, All My Loving, She Loves You, Till There Was You, Roll Over Beethoven, Can't Buy Me Love, Twist and Shout, and Long Tall Sally, during which a guy from the audience reached the stage to shake John Lennon's hand. On the 17th of June 1965, the Beatles returned at the EMI Studios in London to complete Yesterday, with overdubs recorded between 2 and 4 pm, featuring Tony Gilbert on first violin, Sidney Sachs on second violin, Francisco Gabarro on cello and Kenneth Essex on viola. McCartney also re-recorded his vocals. At the end of the recording, the song was mixed down in mono. After that, between 4 and 5.30 pm, the band completed Ringo Starr's vocal number Act Naturally in 13 takes. After a break, between 7 and 9.30 pm, the lads completed the rhythm track of yet another song, Wait, in 4 takes. The song wasn't issued on the Help album, though. Shelved for months, it was recovered and completed on the 11th of November 1965 for inclusion in Rubber Soul. Please check episode 315 of this very podcast for further information. One more productive recording session in 1966. The Beatles were again in Abbey Road between 7 pm and 1.30 am to overdub more vocals on Here, There and Everywhere and the guitar track on Got To Get You Into My Life. 
The session was concluded with the production of five rough mixes of the new Here, There and Everywhere and one of Got To Get You Into My Life. During the day, following the advice of his financial advisors, Paul McCartney acquired High Park Farm in Kintyre, Scotland. The reasoning was that property could shield Paul's money from taxes. Paul was happy about the acquisition, coming as it did with 183 acres of land and a three-bedroom farmhouse for £35,000, about £554,000 in 2020 money. Paul's girlfriend at the time, Jane Asher, had also encouraged him to buy the property as a secluded refuge from Beatlemania. What a fab day comes to a close once again, but fear not, tomorrow… Oh, we have a birthday tomorrow! You'll see! For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation! Simon Mas, music you love!